Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, the podcast for the Narrative Lectionary, with me, Joy J. Moore. And I'm Christopher Fan Kaufman. Today we're talking about the first Sunday of Advent, December the 3rd, 2023. And the text for today is Jeremiah 33, 14 through 18. Tell me a little bit about Jeremiah, Joy. We don't have our uh, Old Testament person with us, so we're pulling we double don't. duty. Yes, right. So you got a preacher and a New Testament scholar. Uh, Jeremiah, I love, uh, uh, we call him the weeping prophet. Um, um, I heard him uh, described by Renita Weems as a storefront preacher. Uh, and um, he, um, he had some troubling words to say, um, but as with all of the prophets, he also spoke the word of promise uh, to the people of God. And that's where we find ourselves as we are listening in the what we have numbered the 33rd chapter, um, where the promise that has been made um, that um, David's descendant um, will um, be on the throne. And in this case, uh, I focused on uh, verse 15, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. And in the days that we are living in right now, I think it's wor worth noting that just because you are a descendant of Abraham, of uh, Isaac, Jacob, um, just because you are among the people of God and have found a position of leadership, it does not mean that you are counted as righteous. And that's been the problem. That's why Jeremiah has been lamenting in uh, so much of the words that he that we have recorded of him, that his call to the people have been a call back to righteousness. And here we hear that God's faithful promise will be um, um, uh, confirmed, uh, fulfilled, to use the text word, yeah. for a righteous branch will spring up. And that is what what gives us hope in this season. Yeah, and I think it's really important what you pointed out in terms of Jeremiah as the weeping prophet, that this isn't a prophecy that comes out of the good times. This isn't a prophecy yeah. that he speaks because things are going well and he's trying to keep those good times rolling. This is in the midst of one of the worst disasters that the people of Israel experienced, which was the invasion of their city, the destruction of their city. And as we think about the modern world, I think that really rings true. As we're recording this, the news is full of stories of war and destruction and grief. And this is the kind of message that Jeremiah is, the kind of world Jeremiah is speaking into. And so keep that in mind, because sometimes, it, it, especially if you're in the U.S. and you're getting ready to celebrate Christmas, it can be really tempting to just focus on the good things and the happy things, and the, the warm feelings that we get when we bake Christmas cookies and get ready for the season. But Jeremiah is speaking into that really hard stuff. And I, you know, it's a month away from when we're recording, but I'm certain that those hard things are not going to go away in that month. And so this word will still need to be spoken into a world of war and grief and destruction. And yeah, I, I really appreciate you bring up this idea of a righteous branch and this idea too that this is the name by which it will be called. He gives the city of Jerusalem a new name. The Lord is our righteousness. And so he keeps coming back to this word that it's something, again, it's something that is not being executed in the land. It's something that the land doesn't see. And so he points us to the hope that God will be the righteousness of our cities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. boy, that, that's something we need right now. <laughs> no kidding. And it's an interesting thing to think about, I think, uh, is that you describe the horror and the reality of the moment that we're living in. Some people struggle with uh, offering uh, a good word in the midst of that. Uh, they think that... Um, um, uh, Christianity is too pie in the sky because we offer hope in the midst of horror. Um, but if you'll allow me, I will run to one of my favorite uh, dystopian novels, The Hunger Games. Please do. <laughs> and um, uh, it, President Snow is frustrated as he's saying, 
you know, too much hope is a bad thing because what enough hope will do that too much hope in his in his eyes, what enough hope will do is it will get you out of bed in the morning. It will get you to face that horror one more day and, and believe that you will be able to stand up again. And that's what, what Jeremiah is doing. He's saying all the words of prophecy of doom and destruction that I have spoken, they've come true. And here we are. And now there's a word for you to get up in the morning again. And that is God is faithful and God has not forgotten God's promise. And when we live in the time that we live in, we need to know that the church has not failed, that God has not gone to sleep, but that these words are true. And um, you, you, you repeated the phrase, a branch. I think it's tr it's important for us to remember that um, just because you are a descendant doesn't mean that you are righteous. Um, it might just be a remnant, which is another term that is used in the Old Testament. Yeah. And the question is whether or not we are a glimpse of that righteousness that gives hope to a hurting world. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. And I think one of the things, too, that you pointed out with that pie in the sky kind of thinking that Jeremiah is really doing the opposite of is he's locating this hope in a person and in specific action of God. It's not just sometime, somewhere, somehow, but he's located and as as a Christian church, we say that we say that righteous branch sprung up from David is Jesus the Christ. And that is where our hope is located. And in the Christmas season, I think that's a really appropriate place to return to, is that, again, pointing people back to the fact that this is a personal hope, this is God who is present, not in general, not in some kind of vague sort of way, but in the life and death of Jesus. And that's what points us to these things you've been talking about, this justice, mm -hmm. this righteousness, this vision of a different future that we can see. And that, again, that gets away from that, like, well, maybe it'll happen sometime if we really, if we really hope hard enough. But instead, mm -hmm. it's that personal and that spe specificity that Jeremiah brings that I think is the real hope in this message. And that specificity is also why it continues to be a difficult word. It's a difficult word because it's not that we will be powerful. It's not that we will be victorious. It's not that our enemies will be crushed. It's that what God has intended for the universe is reconciled by the act of God to God's intention. And so this season of Advent, we are waiting on what God alone can do with the confidence that God is faithful to fulfill the promise that he has given. Amen. And I think that's one of the important things with reading a prophet like Jeremiah in the context of the historical situation that he preaches in. So one of the things to know about this text as you're thinking about the narrative lectionary is it's interacting with and is in the same chronology as the books of first and second kings and especially second kings and mm -hmm. one of the things you see in second kings over and over again my old professor mark Thronfeit used to talk about this all the time is you see what happens when people place their hope in bad leaders and when yes. people hope that somebody who's just a big enough bully is going to come along and make things right mm -hmm. and so Jeremiah is speaking in the midst of this is what went wrong with that kind yes. of thinking. And yes. here is the way that God will do it differently. And I think that's, and it has to do with justice and with righteousness, righteousness. and with the yeah. Lord being our righteousness. Yes. Yes. I, um, I, I have uh, been a uh, visiting professor this uh, term working with undergraduates and I've been teaching the Old Testament and uh, one of the interesting things uh, in an ethics class um, has been these uh, students are thinking that to change the world, you have to change the world. And the whole of scripture is written to a called out people. 
in the midst of a broken world to be the word I like to say, a glimpse of God's good. Yeah. And, and that's the challenge for us. Are we willing um, to say, I hear what everybody is saying, as you described, of that bully of a leader or you know that power over that system of oppression so long as we're on top. Um, and the prophet is saying, no, that's not God's way. And God is calling for a called out people to demonstrate to the world what God's righteousness looks like. And just as we uh, see in Jesus the embodiment of God's good in the flesh, those of us who call ourselves like Christ are to be that called out community as well. Amen. 